Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming Pioneer Open. I'm Tandy, joined by Bo Matt. Say hi, Bo Matt. Hi, Bo Matt. We have four rounds in the books. We are jumping into round number five. This is a seven round of Swiss event. Anyone who is 5-0 after this round, likely able to double draw, but we're not watching any of them this round. It's ladies night. We got some really awesome women in the room, multiple right. of which that we invited to be our special guests, and I wanted to showcase them and make them feel loved and welcome. And that's who we have on camera this round. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the matchup that we're going to be watching them. Sure. So starting off in the first sit seat, we're going to see Krista Oskopinski playing Is It Phoenix up against Brendan Lane on Is It Creativity. Ooh, Phoenix yeah. versus Creativity. That might be a little toughy. Yeah, lots of interaction in these two decks. Uh, they're going to be prepared to deal with things on the stack and try to disrupt each other's game plans, which are pretty different, honestly. Yeah. Uh, lots of recursion from these Phoenixes where the Creativity deck is just trying to at long last, slam one big spell and end the game with World Spine Worm. Yeah, so two really interesting decks that are kind of on the outside looking in of the Pioneer metagame, right. but both still very powerful in their own right with explosive end games. Let's go ahead and head down to the feature match area where we'll watch these two players battle it out. We got Is It Phoenix and we got Creativity, two blue red based decks doing drastically different things one playing a bunch of cantrips like off to consider the other one a little more removal heavy and uh looking to just generate some sort of rando permanent to play is our uh, indomitable creativity to go get world's fine worm and xena goes the reveler on your left is brendan lane on the creativity deck on your right krista oskopinski playing phoenix Brendan's going to take a mulligan down to six. It looks like Chris is going to be keeping her hand. Now, uh, so far, we have four rounds in the books. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of our players that we thought were going to be doing well kind of got knocked off a little bit early. Elliot Raff, you know, the Karuga right. master, had a tough opening couple of rounds. Lost to Corey yeah. Baumeister in round one. Lost to Robin Gonzalez in round two. His day cut short, but Mason Esports Clark. 4-0, right. playing for the 5-0 this round off-camera. We're going to hopefully see him in the elimination rounds. Right. We also have a couple of our other guests. Uh, Niall is also 3-1, and Robin is 2-1-1 after taking that draw early in the event. Yeah, so still a lot of magic left to be played, but all these players in our feature match area are live for top eight, and we are off to the races. Brendan Lane is going to be first, and that's Stormcarve Coast tapped. Christo Skopinski... Probably going to play some sort of blue land. Maybe play an opter consider just to sculpt the hand. We'll see what she wants to go with. That's the Hall of the Storm Giants. Pass back. All right. Krista in uh, game one here is still going to be loaded up on those uh, fiery impulses. Uh, really, the only good targets are going to be the uh, both sides of um, Fable of the Mirror Breaker right. out of Brendan's deck. But Krista is going to hope not to get too flooded on those cards. Oh, we Spell Pierce at the ready for that. Fable the Mirror Breaker and Brennan Lane, you know, on a mulligan of six, having your Fable get hit is rough. Right. We're going to follow that up with an op. We're going to dig deep, maybe looking for a red source, maybe just a couple of blue sources in hand. But Hall of the Storm Giants does enter tapped later in the game, so good to go ahead and get those in untapped early on and using that mana. Here we go to the bottom, and now we're going to draw for turn back Oskopinski's way. Let's see if she can put up uh, any sort of threat here, or if she's just, just going to keep sitting on her hands and uh, waiting to strike later. Right, and uh, that spell pierce was uh, super important for Krista. Fable is one of the ways that is it creativity can actually uh, look to put pressure on an opponent without tapping out for an indomitable creativity. But Krista was able to answer that very clean cleanly with spell pierce. All right, here's Lava Glide Pathway, and we're going to pass back. Brennan Lane, no play on four, says go. These players fast and furious playing these spells, and Brennan Lane likely going to be casting uh, Big Score or something similar end of turn to draw some cards and make some treasures. As Kapinski plays... Storm Carved Coast is land number four. Let's see if she wants to try to get an Arclight Phoenix into play. Here it is. Hard cast from hand. Nice. Bang for three. That's a pretty looking Arclight Phoenix, I got to say. I haven't seen that art before. I saw it last night for the first time, but that's a cool looking art. Yeah, and the Phoenix actually gets through, not being met with a Fiery Impulse or anything like that. Ooh, look at that. So wow. pretty. All right, we have a big score in a turn, though. That's the big story right now. That's going to make two treasure tokens. Those are prime targets for, you guessed it, Indomitable Creativity. And if we have land number five in Creativity, that's going to be Xenoghost. That's going to be World Spine Worm. That's going to be 30 damage going to the dome, and Krista is tapped out. Right, this is uh, the best chance Brendan might get uh, in this game. 
after Krista just taps out for that Phoenix. But, gotta draw the card, and it looks like we have... We do have three red mana, just not a creativity. Yeah, we'll find it eventually, but maybe not now. We're going to go for a main phase big score while Chris is tapped out. This is going to play around Spell Pierce a little bit. This is going to make sure that if we find something, we can deal with the Phoenix while Chris is tapped out. Spike Field Hazard plus, you know, Fire Impulse or something can exile it forever. Right. And we're going to go back Chris's way. These Phoenix decks are quite strong against creature-based strategies. A little bit weaker against the, you know, combo hand from hand strategies like Lotus Field and these creativity decks. But Krista coming prepared with spell pierces, and I'm curious how many she has in the 75 at her disposal. And if she's able to pick up another one here off of this pieces of the puzzle. Thing in the ice, treasure cruise, land opt, opt. Looks like probably cruise opt. This is a great spot for treasure cruise, really. Uh... Krista's uh, almost certainly going to be able to draw three cards this turn, unless she has some sort of two-mana interaction in her hand. Decides on the opt instead, maybe indicating that she already has one or two delve spells in hand. Yeah, don't want to over-delve, and you want to make sure you can cast as many spells as you can. So Krista taking the two opts. Maybe already has two delve spells in hand, right? Exactly. You can usually uh, uh, be pretty sure you can cast two uh, in the game, but three in one game without things going too late. Uh, is a tall order, and there is the treasure cruise once we get these cards delved away. Alright, we're going to delve seven, leaving spell pierce. We're going to draw three cards unless Brennan Lane has a response. Looks like he does not. One, two, three. Lighting Axe, Land, and Thing in the Ice are the draws, but no Phoenix in the graveyard. If Krista has a red source, can go maybe Lightning Axe on my own Phoenix, discarding a second Phoenix. Bring both back, attack for six to increase the clock, but doesn't have it. Just a tap to Stormcarved Coast and back Brennan Lane's way. Brennan, uh, you know, one of the risks with creativity casting these big scores, if you don't find a creativity in time, uh, the more you turn through your deck, the higher the risk that you draw one of your combo pieces in Xenagos or World Spine Worm. Right. I had uh, some real fury moments playing creativity and playtesting yeah. where... I would just like, okay, I'm just going to untap and kill my opponent. They're all tapped out, and boom, draw Xenagos or draw World's Fine Worm. And it just makes you want to never play the deck again. <laughs> right. <laughs> you have to have some real fortitude to keep playing after one of those games. Exactly. Huh? Well, if there's anything Reed Duke has, it's fortitude. That's true. We actually used to, you know, kind of joke, but be serious. Like, Reed's attitude and approach toward the game is, is admirable. But he's one of those types of players, well, even if he starts off 0-2 in an event, he'll likely play out all the rounds right right wants the experience wants to learn his deck better you know you're in a tournament space and e even though like you no longer can win the event most of the time uh that doesn't matter to him what matters to him is about the right. the education and the learning right and Here's krista here uh starting off this turn with a thing in the ice uh actually pretty good threat against creativity um their red removal is gonna have trouble dealing with it uh without two for wanting and uh We'll see if Thing in the Ice is going to have an impact on this game. That's a cool-looking Thing in the Ice, too, man. Yeah, that was the uh, RCQ promo uh, one or two seasons ago, I believe. All right. Going to cast an op. That's going to remove a counter from the Thing in the Ice. Looks like Brennan Lane's hand is relatively weak. I see Volcanic Spite and Impulse. And uh, one of the key plays with thing in the ice that you can see in this matchup is if crystal lines things up just right it can threaten to bounce the world spine worm before it even gets a chance to attack uh leaving brennan brendan without the opportunity to kill on whatever turn like he finally finds that available okay here's two ops if krista has a land to play for turn can threaten to flip the thing in the ice with uh two more instances of sorceries that cost one it's not always doable but it's usually doable phoenix is uh, very consistent in this realm. We're going to shock with Steam Vents. My guess, we're going to attack with Arclight Phoenix for 3, putting Brennan to 11, and then Krista's basically just going to sit on this thing in the ice until the end of the game and hope that Brennan can't kill it and she can use it to bounce that World Spine Worm like Bowman was talking about. Right, and depending on whether Krista decides to cast any more spells this turn, two counters with two mana is actually a great spot to be posturing for Krista. Because Brendan wants to, you know, threaten the thing in the ice enough for Krista to commit those spells. Uh, but Krista is also uh, just, you know, any two one mana spells uh, means that whatever Brendan does could be erased. And Brendan just going to dig some more with Impulse. 
yep, so this impulse is going to be looking for creativity. But uh, might be looking for some way to kill thing the ice first. It is dangerous to leave it sitting on the table. And it looks like we did find a creativity. But now, the Awoken Horror is beckoning. Yeah. Brendan being put to the test. Does Krista have two one mana spells? Uh, this is a point where even her interactive spells are live. Uh, Fiery Impulse, for example. Two Fiery Impulse, not doing anything else in the matchup. But flipping thing in the ice at instant speed could be a great tool. This is one of the reasons why many creativity players have tried different creature packages for the uh, the creativity kill. The right. World's Fine Worm is really good against traditional spot removal. Um, you know, things that can destroy creatures or whatever, those are generally pretty uh, weak against World's Fine Worm. But things that bounce, things that exile, right. those are often really damning for the World's Fine Worm version because you need to pump it and you need to attack with it. And things like Thing in the Ice. Even the Wandering Emperor, right, is right. just impossible to beat. Exactly. And uh, we saw in an earlier round... Uh, a different player on Gearhulk creativity. Right. Uh, they were able to take at least one game against Mono Green, but really, if you're playing against Mono Green, this is the version you want to be on, uh, being able to just end the game all at once instead of having to grind through any blockers. All right, we're tapping some lands. Here comes Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We'll see if Krista wants to bite. Gonna make a two-two. My guess, probably gonna bash it with a Fire Impulse or something. Well, now uh, this turn being over, Krista's not really going to be able to put a ton of pressure on Brendan without casting some spells. So I would hazard guess that this thing in the ice is finally going to be flipping this turn. Uh, unless Krista decides she's comfortable waiting. I think Krista might have missed lethal here. We have a Hall of the Storm Giants. That's seven. Thing in the ice is seven. Brendan's at 14 life. Could have went end of turn. Red spell, red spell, spell. Transform thing in the ice. Untap, attack for 14. If Brendan didn't have a way to deal with the flip thing in the ice or the face down thing in the ice, how, how is he going to be able to deal with the face up thing in the ice? Right, but importantly, we see uh, Brendan still has all four of those treasures from Big Score. Is threatening uh, any number of avenues of interaction. Uh, so that would be a serious commitment for Krista to flip the thing and tap, tap out for Hall of Storm Giants. Well, if you do it in a turn, you untap. You're just trying to kill them, right? Right. All right, we're going to flip the thing next. We're going to get a little aggressive. Two fire impulses cast. One in response to the first one resolving just to get the extra cast to help bring Arclight Phoenix back. Now we're going to go Spike Field Hazard to the face. It's going to put Lane down to 13. Phoenix is going to come back. We're going to attack for 10. And then uh, Volcanic Spike going to stifle the bleeding just a little. And this is really going to be the last turn for Brendan Lane, uh, but a great turn to try to dig with the Chapter 2 of, the F of Fable of the Mirror Breaker going off. There's not a whole lot Krista's deck can do in Game 1 against some treasure tokens and a creativity with mana up. All right, we're going to discard 2. Oh, I guess didn't have creativity yet. I, I just thought he found it earlier. Okay, see what the play is. Three mana tapping. Valakut Awakening. Uh, this is an interesting spell. Uh, and modal double-faced card. Here it's going to dig Brendan two more cards deep after putting one on the bottom. And <laughs> no creativity. Brutal. Brutal. The Spell Pierce and the Lightning Axe wasn't going to be good enough to interact with that creativity. And fortunately for Kristen, she takes down game number one. Uh, that powerful thing in the ice transformation, big attack, the Arclight Phoenix coming back over and over in the face of Volcanic Spite just uh, made it a little too hard for the creativity player to deal with that. Uh, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see two of our special guests alongside Kristen. We got Nile, we got Robin Gonzalez, both playing, trying to make top eight at our Pioneer Open this weekend. They uh, had a lot of fun yesterday. Uh, old Robin Gonzalez won... Her RCQ yesterday, the RCQ, right. she went 5-0 with uh, Rakdos Evoke, taking it down and cashing her ticket to Atlanta DreamHack later this year. All right, Matt. We got some sideboards to look at. Why don't you give me a rundown of uh, what they got going on and what you think they're going to be bringing in. So Krista's Is It Phoenix sideboard. We're going to start out with two copies of Aether Gust, two Disdainful Stroke, one Negate, one Mystical Dispute, two Abrade, two Young Pyromancer, two Brotherhood's End, two Crackling Drake, and one Ral Is It Viceroy. 
we have a lot of good options here for Krista. Um, particularly the, these young pyromancers. If Krista expects Brendan to trim on the spot removal, uh, young pyromancer can take over the game uh, while allowing her to hold up interaction on the key turns out of creativity. Yeah, and the post-cyborg configuration has way fewer spot removal spells like Lightning Axe and Fire Impulse, and you get to trade those out for negate more spell pierces, disdainful strokes, things of that nature. And the focal point on turn two of a young Pyromancer just makes all of that reactive stuff right. so much stronger because you're just applying pressure for so little mana. Right. Then uh, Krista also has a that varied counterspell suite. Uh, she's going to be taking a look at those, figuring out which ones work best in this matchup. But then moving on to Brendan Lane's Is It Creativity sideboard, we see three copies of Rending Volley, one Ether Gust, three Shark Typhoon, one Coma Cosmos Serpent, two Holebreaker Horror, two Disdainful Stroke, two Brotherhood's End, and one Atraxa Grand Unifier. Now, do you think this is a matchup where two of the... Holebreaker horrors come in as the creativity targets. You know, I'm excited to see. This is a an often debated topic among creativity pilots. We even saw at the Pro Tour, Reduke switching back and forth in the finals between the Worms and the Holebreaker horrors. Uh, actually, attracts a Grand Unifier. I'm very interested to see here. Lines up pretty well against the Phoenix game plan. Uh, just hold the entire board down uh, without many ways for Phoenix to interact with it once it's on the battlefield. My big problem is that if you want to do the Atraxa thing, yeah. uh, I think it's it would behoove you if to only do that in matchups where your spot removal is good. Because sure. drawing a bunch of cards just elongates the game even more. But as we know, Phoenix is very good at going long thanks right. to the Galvanic Iteration into Temporal Trespass combination where they can take two, three, four turns in a row sometimes. Right. And beyond that, we're just looking at some... Uh... Uh, one Ether Gust and not a whole lot of other relevant interaction in the sideboard for Brendan. He's going to be sticking with the main deck uh, spell pierces and some removal maybe has to stay in the deck. All right. As these players are finishing up their sideboards, I want to take a moment to shout out our sponsors. Thank you so much to Ultimate Guard. If you want to check out the best gaming accessories in the business check out ultimateguard.com uh check your local game sword for ultimate guard product and if they don't have it tell them that they need to get it we got cortex sleeves katana sleeves archive deck boxes boulder deck boxes the sidewinder deck boxes these are things that people love in the magic community myself included and ultimate guard makes a really high quality product and they've given us a ton of product to ship in our uh, invitational qualifier packages that we send to all the stores who participate in the apex invitational qualifier so shout out to both ultimate guard as well as uh our other uh sponsors g fuel energy formula for keeping us going on these long weekends where we do coverage from well when the sun's up to the sun's down right maybe a little before maybe a little after huh and uh, g fuel energy keeps us energized and full of that fuel lastly thanks to wings etc for providing us for a nice spot to have dinner afterwards hang out with our friends have, yeah have a drink or two have a, a burger or some wings thanks again to wings etc for sponsoring us yeah all right players are finishing up sideboarding here uh this matchup like i mentioned lots of different directions brendan could go uh holebreaker horror can really turn a game on its head uh out of creativity, all of a sudden, uh, you're never really sure if your spells are even going to resolve, depending on Brendan's hand. And Krista, adding a couple more cards into the deck. A couple more cards. The whole sideboard's coming in. I don't know, man. It's probably not anything that drastic, but, yeah. uh, you know, this is a Phoenix deck. Uh, has so many red removal spells that are... Not worthless, but they are not worth the investment, and they're not right. worth the card stock while they're in your deck. You'd much rather have spell pierces, negates, you know, those reactive blue cards to help stop their combo, as well as threats like the young pyromancer out of the sideboard, so you can, you know, turn the game on its head and punish your opponent for cutting their removal spells. Right, because fiery impulse is not really where you want to be against Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Nope. Much rather land a spell pierce like Krista did in game one. So, Brendan going to be on the play. going to be able to threaten that combo just a little bit earlier. Okay. Players drawing their opening hands. Brendan Lane going to be on the play since he was unable to find the Indomitable Creativity last game. Krista 
Taking it down with a big hit with Thing in the Ice and the resiliency of Arclight Phoenix. We're underway. We're in a lane with another Tap Storm Carve Coast on one. Back Krista's way. Just a River Glide Pathway. Turn number two for Brennan Lane. Draws. Plays Lava Glide Pathway and passes back. Krista going to fire off this opt. And it gets impulse in response. <laughs> gets impulse. I will impulse targeting I, your opt. It looked no, like yeah. it was going to be a counter. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, okay. All right, op taking a peek. Top or bottoms. Both of these decks definitely kind of built to go draw go for a little while. Uh, get these cantrips out of their hand. Uh, we'll see how long it'll be until someone pulls the trigger. Phoenix definitely better at doing that. Uh, you know, spinning the wheels and then incidentally getting some threats out of the graveyard. All right, gonna bottom whatever it was. Forgot to draw from the opt. I think maybe. Unclear. Mechanically, not sure what just happened. It's possible. I'm just going to trust that they did it right. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Sogan's on is the land for Brennan. We're going to play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And that's going to... Already getting ready. Unless Negate takes it down. Back no Christmas way. Draws return. And here's Stormcarve Coast. We're going to lead off here. We'll just maybe consider... These yeah. players wishing they had preordain like modern gamers. <laughs> Look, they've only had it for a short period of time. Here's the big one. Pieces of the puzzle. The shields are down, so she's going to resolve this now while Brennan's tapped out. We have Spell Pierce, a Braids. Uh, I can't tell what the foils are. Something shiny One Galvanic Iteration's in there. And an Aether Gust. Okay. Decides to pick up the braid, maybe thinking this is a Gear Hulk version. Maybe wants to blow up a treasure in response to the target. That's true. We didn't see uh, any indicators in game one of which version Brendan might be on if you're on Krista's seat. And Brendan taking advantage of Krista's tap out for a piece of the puzzle in favor of Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, we're going to go Fable here, tapped Spike Field Hazard, Goblin Token down. And now, does Krista have any interaction for this token? Or is Brennan going to use it as a token generator for treasures? We're going to start with a consider. Top card. Goes to hand. Any removal? Lightning Axe discarding Phoenix, perhaps? Treasure Cruise after? Seems right. like a nice Krista, little sequence. Yeah, Krista really doesn't have anything online right now. Uh, here comes a pathway. Yeah, we're going to put it on blue. That means hand probably full of draw spells. We're counting the graveyard. That means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Trying to maybe keep the Galvanic Iteration there. We're going to pay one, and it's gone. Out of here. Draw three. Cruising. Mana more important than the flashback. All right, so these players actually, uh, you know, Krista taps out for the pieces of the puzzle, and then that gets the players going. Brennan decides, great spot for the uh, Fable. Krista decides, all right, that gives me a window for Treasure Cruise. Slobber knocker. Slobber knocker. Back and forth. Absolutely. Tapping out every single turn using every bit of mana. And now Krista uh probably gonna be going to discard this turn if there's no threat to deploy or anything like that. Discards the steam vents. Okay. Back to Brennan's side. Yeah, doesn't have an answer for the fable, so likely cut all those red removal spells and Fable the Mirror Breaker are gonna be pretty good here. She had negate for the first one, but the second one sure stuck. And now Brennan Lane resolving Chapter 2. Going to pitch probably a couple of red spells. It looks like Spikefield Hazard, uh, uh, Volcanic Spite, maybe a Creativity in there, maybe a Negate. Yeah, so Brennan definitely does have the Creativity, and uh, with this Fable, we'll have the fodder for it, but knows that Krista has at least a Spell Pierce, and on future turns, maybe even more interaction, meaning it could be a while before Brennan tries to end the, end the game. All right, finds another land to play. It's a storm carved coast. Those lands feel so great. When uh, oh, here's a lightning axe. So she did have it, but she was waiting for Brendan to make a bunch of decisions. Maybe choosing to fight for it in this spot instead of on her own turn. Holding up the uh, you know holding up the gate so you can't get the pre combat uh, creativity to kill you right. Right, absolutely. Uh, that's a great spot to try to kill the token if you are at all afraid of creativity. But the uh, especially post board, uh, you're all of a sudden not as as worried about creative 
creativity for two every single turn because even just creativity for one like brendan is casting here indicates he might have a threat like holebreaker horror and krista lined up her interaction perfectly uh getting uh, inducing a tap out for brendan and being able to spell pierce the first creativity to be put on the stack all right, nice one from Krista. That spell Pierce taking down that creativity for X equals one, like you said. We're back Krista's way. She's got a tapped Hall of the Storm Giants to start the turn. Let's see what she wants to do with the rest of her mana. We're going to start with an Abraid. Kills the Goblin. We knew she had that from way back when. Right. And uh, some important information from the previous turn. The creativity didn't resolve, so Krista didn't see what Brennan has, had in his deck. But the fact that Brennan was willing to cast it for X equals one uh, definitely suggests to Krista that there are there's more than just a worm in this deck. Yeah, great point, great point. Here goes Charted Course. If there's a Phoenix in hand, this is going to unlock it, putting it into the graveyard where it belongs. Get in your home! Get in your home so you can Don't get you want to be home. in your home? <laughs> Discard Spire Bluff Canal, not a Phoenix, but a deadish land. We'll see what else Crystal right. wants to do this turn. And Brendan, after having traded that interaction, is pretty low on cards here without Treasure Cruise in his deck. All right, backside of Fable, the Mirror Breaker, often very scary for any deck to deal with, but Creativity deck doesn't actually have very many targets to tap and activate it for, so at right. this point it's kind of just a 2 2. Sure, once can... you've resolved the Creativity, you can start making some extra crabs, shrimp, yeah. whatever you call that thing. Yeah. Uh, but right now, just a 2-2, not getting a whole lot done, as Krista has a pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, we're going to fire this off. Looking for a big Delve spell, Treasure Cruises, Temporal Trespass. You know, we want to put Phoenix into the graveyard. Mill over a couple of things in the ice. Yeah, you know, we want a Phoenix, but Treasure Cruise is a pretty good secondary plan. All right, looks like Hand has a Phoenix in it. Drew must have drawn that... After we resolve the charter course. Right. And let's get delving for this treasure cruise. Brendan really wishing he had access to this card. But, you know, he could. Yeah, the creativity is not built like that, though. They don't play a bunch of the velocity cards like opt and consider. Right. They're way more focused on, uh, you know, things like spike field hazard, volcanic spite. And we did see the third thing in the ice uh, drawn by Krista off that treasure cruise. Uh, we'll see whether she wants to wait to deploy that and keep some mana up for uh, either a creativity or, at this point, Holebreaker Horror is definitely a concern. Uh, just flashing that in on Krista's end step is a huge threat that Brendan does not have in hand. All right, she's going to pass back. Fable, get in for two. Krista takes it down to 14. Hand of Brennan Lane looks land heavy with only three cards and back Krista's way. No play. We draw another blue spell. Wow, it looks like two spike field hazard and a steam vents for Brendan. Uh, holding onto these cards, really the uh, one of the better top decks at this point, uh, if not big score, is Valakut Awakening. Would we'll let Brendan dig four cards deeper off these lands that he's holding in hand. Here's thing in the ice that's going to be pretty hard for Brendan to deal with. Okay, and we'll see if uh, Crystal wants to act now and put some counters off of it, or can wait till end of turn. Gonna go ahead and cast Piece of the Puzzle, number three. Gonna go digging. Piece of the Puzzle all by itself usually gets you three-fourths of the way to flipping a thing in the ice, and there's a Phoenix. Oh, and only one spell. I thought we were gonna whiff whiff, but we did hit the, the Treasure Crew, so that's maybe good enough. And now the question is, do we want to go for it this turn, or do we want to wait until next turn so we can transform Thing in the Ice? I kind of want to wait, personally. Yeah, you know, you're not a, uh, you're not really under threat, except exactly that uh, the Holebreaker Horror that you might be afraid of. Um, and uh, Treasure Cruise, you know, great place to start. Yeah, Very and, low investment. And also, if Krista doesn't have interaction already, this is a great way to find that interaction, right? So, like, right. It, it's good to cast this now if you want spell pierces in the gates, but if you already have it, you want to, like, hold up mana, right? Right. Here's a draw three. One, two, three. This is the second instant or sorcery cast this turn. First was pieces, second was cruise, so no phoenix coming back. Brendan Lane's way untaps with Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Draws for turn. Mutable. Okay. So, two spike fields and a steam vents in hand that we know about. Now, if Brendan really wants to get spicy, you can animate Mutavolt, copy it with Fable and Mirror Breaker, and then spend another mana to animate it again. 
uh, if Brendan was really interested in doing anything at all with his mana. But we see a Krista here on Brendan's end step, cast an opt, another counter off the thing in the ice. Okay, let's see if she wants to flip now or go to her turn. And that beautiful actually, uh, pretty interesting here, is going to be pretty big for Brendan. Uh, both the Thing in the Ice and the Hall of Storm Giants threatening to do 7 damage. Uh, that's uh, pretty easily stopped with that Mutavolt. It's funny, a neat little trick that you said where she could attack. She can also do it on defense, right? She goes, animate Mutavolt, uh, activate Fable, copy it. It becomes an unactivated Mutavolt token. Right. And then Mutavolt and Fable go back to hand. And then you can activate Mutavolt to chump block. But actually, the original Mutavolt stays on the battlefield because that card's a horror. Ha! Ha-ha! But Brendan's just going to allow this thing in the ice to flip and see if he can get some chumps in with this Mutavolt. Uh, but the Fable being returned to hand, actually, uh, that's some value that could get Brendan a little deeper into his deck if he has the time. Yeah, it's going to take two turns for it to get going, and uh, I think... Krista is just looking for, you know, Galvanic Iteration plus Temporal Trespass to close the door. Right. Interesting to see a reversion to Thing in the Ice after Ledger Shredder was the King 2-drop for so long, but right. it's been looking great here for Krista in this match. Absolutely. You know, both cards are going to have the matchups where the sh they shine and the matchups where they don't. This is definitely a Thing in the Ice matchup. Uh, Brennan usually has to spend two cards to deal with it. We saw in game one, wasn't even even able to do that. All right, Krista here, thinking about the rest of the sequence. Wants to bring back the Phoenix. Wants to attack with Thing in the Ice, or the Awoken Horror, rather. At least one Phoenix coming back, looks like two. We got two. Here comes a big attack. One Spike Field Hazard resolves. Crystal looking at a bevy of options. Two spike field hazards. One. Resolves. One Phoenix exiled forever. Even if she had a counter spell, she'd probably just chill. Here comes a Mutavault. We're going to chump. We're going to chump. You were a good Mutavault. We hardly knew ye. You were the best. All right. Fable of the Mirror Breaker going to be coming down for Brennan Lane this turn, more than likely. Krista just has it all, able to discard Arcolite Phoenix <laughs> to hand size. Yeah, eight cards in hand. Yeah, here you go. Four, four mana up, definitely has two negates or whatever. Just, yeah, yeah. here you go. Brennan Lane. Down to ten life, I believe, from a seven-point hit. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, chump block the broken right. Horror. And we're in a tough situation if you're a Brennan Lane fan. Back against the wall, down a game, facing off an Awoken Horror, multiple Arclight Phoenixes, and a Gripful. Multiple... And a Hall of Storm Giants. Yep. We had multiple Treasure Cruises, multiple pieces of the puzzle resolved this game, and no real fight really put up for Brennan Lane. Only cast Creativity for X equals 1 a single time. And uh, now just trying to figure out a way out of this with a handful of weakness. Right. Wrestling with his fate. I Let's like play that. a favor. I'm going to steal that. Here's Fable. Is it good enough? I'll be Kane, you Ask can be Brennan. Fable. Yeah, yeah, Alright, that was pretty good. Alright, this is a 2-2 Goblin. Goblin Shaman versus the world. Steam vents, one card left. Alright, back Krista's way. If she does have a removal spell, maybe wants to play it on her own turn to uh, be part one of the Arclight Phoenix comeback train. Right. See what she wants to do. That's a river glide pathway. Counting up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like a Hall of Storm Giant's about to get activated. With two mana up to protect. It's not a lethal attack. But it does force a chump block with the goblin, which might be what she wants to do. Right. Because that takes away the ability to cast creativity if you don't have any targets. Right. And this is uh Krista without a removal spell, unlikely to find lethal here, but even just uh Forcing the Shaman to chump block uh, significantly reduces Brennan's outs, but there's interaction. Either that token's out of here. Do you want to put it on top or bottom? Yeah. doesn't matter. It disappears. And whether want Krista wants to commit this haul, it looks like no. Just going to leave up mana. Ooh, Shark Typhoon being cycled by Brennan. If I'm Brennan, I actually just take the 10 draw. 
Right, you, especially if he has a powerful single target uh, to hope to hit uh, with creativity. You're, he just keeps, you know, throwing away his uh, targets for creativity as chum blockers. Obviously, he's pr protecting himself. He's blocked twice. That's 14 damage he's prevented, and he's at 14. So, yeah, right. the first one was right. The second one I don't think is right because you just have to have a target. Exactly. And we saw Brennan discard Whoa! two cards to Fable Trigger. Was that a big score? It was big score, and creativity were the two draws. Wow. wow. So not much Brendan can do other than uh, cast this big score, probably, is letting Krista untap. I don't understand. Just ripping pieces off the top. Oh, but you have to discard the creativity. Exactly. I see. So Brendan uh, not really able to make use of that. Krista leading off the pieces, try to get this Phoenix back this turn, and put the nail in the coffin. Looking at the deck, it's not very big. You know, that'll happen. Yeah. Can't take the treasure cruise. Only four cards left in the deck. Spikefield Hazard. That can be a spell to help bring Phoenix back. Charter Course. Also a little scary. And uh, the Spikefield Hazard actually lines up very well here. Uh, if either the Hall or the Awoken Horror and two Phoenixes get through, that would be 13 damage. Uh, co coincidentally, Brendan... Now at 13, post spike field, down to 12, Phoenix coming back. Does Krista have the mana for this haul? Probably not. No, casting the pieces took her off of it, but right. this is a 13-point attack, so unless Brennan Lane has uh, an answer here, a blocker or a removal spell, this is going to be a lethal. Brennan Lane going to go for big score here. Does Krista have a counter spell? Empty-handed. There it is. Disdainful Stroke. Krista Skopinski, 4-1, and one, one step closer to those elimination rounds. Yeah, you saw Brennan uh, having to discard the creativity there, not only leaving him without the payoff, just leaving uh, Krista with the knowledge that the coast is clear as long as I counter this spell. And Krista is into the next round at 4-1.